Hi, I'm Sanook and welcome back to my MMO devlog series. As a recap of the first video, we made a single player prototype of the main mechanics and now we're ready to make the leap into multiplayer. We're back in our mirror board and we had just checked off stage 1 and I've got stage 2 planned out here. The goals for this stage are to set up the client and the server, have basic player input, movement and collision, and also add rollback. Our first task on the roadmap is to convert the prototype into Rust using an ECS. I'll quickly go through what that is and how we'll use it. An ECS stands for Entity Component System. So entities are collections of components, which are data, and systems take these components and use it for the game logic. So if we have a player, tree, and sawmill entity, we can assign components that are only relevant to them. So for the player, they can move around, but the tree and the sawmill are stationary. Therefore, only the velocity component needs to be assigned to the player. For how we'll be using this, let's look at the player entity. They have a position component where the player is, a state which can either be idle or moving, a move target, so where the player wants to go, and a velocity of where the player will go. So at the start of each frame, we'll go through each system for the game logic. Starting with deciding the player's state, we'll take the move target and position components, and with that, we'll determine what the player's state is. So if the position and the move target are the same, we want the player to be idle. But if they're different, we want the player to move. So our next system is actually handling that state. So this is just for the move state, We'll take in the position, move target, and collision lines, and use the exact same script that we used in our initial prototype to determine the velocity. So with that new velocity, we can apply that to our position. And last of all, we'll render the player at their new position. So we'll be using all these systems for each frame. And the key takeaway is that everything is very deterministic. So with the same move target and position, the game server will actually calculate all the other components based on those initial values. Seeing how we went through this stuff last develop, I'll speed through the updates now. We've got our client hosted, and I have it counting ticks at 30 times a second. Now we've got the player's position and collision drawn on a canvas. We can now take in player input, and now they can move towards the target. Just like before, I got the player states working, and now we can hold to move. Made the game a little bigger, and now we have some collision lines drawn. Just ported over our collision script, and after taking one hour to fix a typo, it worked exactly the same. That's all for the single player. Now we'll move on to the client and server. There are a bunch of internet protocols for sending data, and the two main ones are UDP and TCP. So UDP is unreliable, but it's really fast and lightweight, and TCP is both reliable and secure, but it's slower and has a lot of baggage. So in games, they mostly use UDP for real-time multiplayer, but the only problem is that browsers can't handle raw UDP packets. So let me introduce you to Quick. It has the benefits of both protocols, but is fairly new and not as stable. So for my server, it will be a HTTP3 web transport server that runs over quick for its speed and security and is able to connect to modern browsers. This is seven days later from that last clip and I went on a bit of a journey to create the web transport server. As a preface, my Rust experience before this was just going through the book and making that prototype. So I'm still really new to it. I started by finding an example in the H3 crate and copy pasting it as a foundation that I can work with but I was way too optimistic about everything just working out of the box and that was not the case at all. Nothing worked, so I started with a blank project and tried to get one feature working at a time. So before the browser can even try to connect to the server, it needs certain certificates to prove that it's secure. I spent three whole days trying to bypass this so I could just test it on my own computer, but I gave up. I bought as small of a server as I could on Google Cloud, assigned it to my old dodgeball domain, and got it certified. So now I can actually attempt to connect to the server and see even more errors. 
I was just going through the documentation, taking it step by step, and this process actually made me understand what I was using. I got to a stage where the server was receiving the handshake packet and sending back an acknowledgement, but on the client side, it still didn't work. It took me another four whole days to understand the issue, and when I did, fixing it was a bit out of my depth. Having it as a browser client was really important, and if I couldn't get this working, I wasn't sure if I'd continue the project without it. The trouble with being new to something is that you don't know how to ask the right questions to get the information you want. So in bed, I was randomly googling keywords that were close to my problem, and I had found a new Rust crate that suited my needs exactly. I literally jumped out of bed, tried using it straight away, and this time when I copy-pasted, I actually knew the basics and was able to change it for my setup, and it worked instantly. So on the left, we have a test client that I found online that I've been using, and on the right, we have our Google Cloud machine that is hosting our server. So I can click to connect and send data back and forth, and it all works. But this is just one puzzle piece, so now I have to combine it with the ECS to get our gameplay. All right, so combining them actually has a lot of moving parts, and I thought I'd show you how I'm breaking it down. So right now we have a single player setup, so the client is taking all of the responsibilities. So the first thing we're going to do is move the game logic to the server's responsibility, and that makes sure that all the actions are trustworthy. Another responsibility that the server has is client communication. So the setup is that the clients will send their inputs, and the server will calculate the game state, and send those results back for the client to render. So for now, we're not going to worry about the client and just focus on the server. Both of these responsibilities are basically two loops. So the first being the game logic is a fixed loop at 30 times a second. And this just runs all the systems in the ECS. And the client is also a big loop, but it can happen at any time for clients connecting and also for sending and receiving messages. We're going to keep these pretty separate, but they still will be communicating with each other. So for example, when a client joins, they'll be added to a client map with a given ID, and we will communicate to the ECS that a new client has joined. So that will create a player, and we'll just assign the new client ID. So if we want to send something to a specific player, we just have to give the data that we want to send and the client ID, to the client manager and it will take care of all of that itself. So I'll start coding and I'll come back with an update. Okay, so I've started the server and we have both sides running. So for the game side, I just have it counting up every one second and now I can connect and it adds it to a dash map. So you can see the connection ID and if we add another client as well, you can see that there's two IDs in the connection map. Now we just have to communicate between the two sides. I'm back and we now have communication from the server to our game loop. So if I connect, we can see that the game loop has printed the player ID. And if I send some data, let's just say input data, it will now print out what I sent it on the game loop side. I have now started transferring the ECS into our game loop and when a client connects, it will create a player entity with a connection component. So now we can broadcast a message to all entities that have this connection component. And right now it just sends the current tick to each client that's connected. Now that we're done with the basic server, we can now move on to the client. Okay, big update. I've created the clients. So let me run the server and I'll refresh the client to connect. So when it connects, it will create a player in a random spot and send the information back to the client to draw. I'll do the same for the other clients. And as you can see, they're all the same. I also standardize how I'm building and decoding the packets, but I think there's some improvements I can make, so I won't explain that for now. I think what I'll do next is send the player inputs so that they can move. I can now click and it will send the coordinates to the server. Now we just have to implement the game logic. We have the collision lines in the game now, and we're just making sure that the client and the server have the exact same collision lines. So when I start the server and I'll join, we're in the middle of the room, and now we can click to move. And all the collisions work. And if I join on another client, 
and we can see that it's it's still synced. So that's it for the basic networking. I was planning to add client prediction and rollback, but after thinking about it a lot, I'm gonna move it to the backlog. This is because it might be too much of an investment and I really don't wanna to have to re-implement a feature if I happen to change anything to do with the movement. But there is some good news. I've decided on an art style and it's pretty ambitious for my skill set, but I'm really excited to get started. I feel like that first impression of a game is really important and that comes down to its art and presentation. I'm not gonna spoil it for now, so if you've enjoyed the devlog and wanna keep up to date, you can subscribe and thanks for watching.